Mm -hmm. So we're gonna go over. <laughs> we're gonna go over some of our uh, manufacturing process. All of our parts that we make have to start in CAD, where we actually design the parts and make a CAD model out of it, and that's what you can see right here. And so this is the 3D model of the 20 MOA pick rail that we're about to go and machine. This is actually master cam. Once we have a CAD model, we can put it into a CAM, computer-aided machining software, that tells the CNC machines what they're going to do, how they're going to machine it, feeds and speeds and all that stuff. This is the model, and now we're going to go over the simulation of how the machine actually cuts out this from raw material. We're able to run the simulation in our CAM software that proves to us that the machine is going to do out in the shop what we tell it it's going to do. Is that good? Or do something else? start off as 12 foot long sticks of 6061 P6 aluminum. We're fixturing them in this saw right here that cuts them into our raw material blanks before they go into the CNC mill. So here's that raw material after it gets cut in the automated chop saw. Again, the 6061 aluminum. This is gonna go into three different fixtures for off one and one mill. Then we're gonna take it out and put it into another mill to do the second operation that finishes the big rails. So we just showed you the raw material after it gets cut in the automated saw. And then it goes into the three fixtures in the middle here, and it cuts the, the different Picatinny slots here. It cuts the mounting holes. And then there's one tool, a special form tool, that actually cuts the dovetail on both sides. And then we're gonna take this part and put it in the mill behind us, and it's gonna cut the second operation that mounts to the receiver. So you just saw how we did operation one, where we cut the whole top surface, we cut the dovetail here, and in doing that, now we're gonna flip it over, and in this fixture in the middle, it allows us to clamp on the dovetail, and we're gonna surface this radius that mounts to our receiver. And it's a specific radius, uh, plus, so minus two thousandths radius, in relation to our receiver. So we do get a small amount of crush so it holds it very tightly against our receiver. If this radius or diameter were bigger than our receiver, it can actually rock and you get some accuracy issues. So we've actually called out this radius and we control this very tightly in this machine. So we're gonna go ahead and mount this in here. So we wanted to next go over the finishing process of these. When they come out of these CNC mills, there's often little burrs that just flake off. And instead of hand flaking them off, we're gonna put them in an automated tumbler that gives a really nice surface finish, breaks all the burrs off, kind of rounds everything off so it's nice and smooth. We're gonna go over that right now. So here we are with a tumbler. We're gonna show you how this works. We have this media that's basically plastic infused with an abrasive and the abrasive knocks down the edges and gets us a nice surface finish. We just pulled this part out of the tumbler. Notice it's nice and clean, no burrs, nice soft edges. It takes about a half an hour to tumble these parts. And from here, we're gonna bring it down to anodizing and we're hoping to show you some of that footage. 
Hey guys, we're over here with Robert with Sapphire Metal Finishing. We're going to go over anodizing of our pick rails. Robert, what exactly is anodizing? So anodizing is an electrochemical process. Um, we'll go through a series of baths to clean and prep the material. And essentially it goes into an into a acid bath and it uses electricity and it creates a glass layer on the surface and it's got four billion pinholes per square inch so it's creating this layer that is abrasion resistant and it allows us to color it and it just makes it really tough and strong so the base material underneath is still aluminum it's still soft but that top little layer is really really hard um, in in nature uh, sapphire is aluminum oxide and so that's why we're called sapphire metal finishing. Oh, nice. okay. So in nature, it's aluminum oxide. So we're artificially creating an aluminum oxide layer on top of that aluminum film. Yeah, so we're going to show you the process. Let's go to the first step. Okay, let's go over to the blaster and check them out. All right, so we've designed these blasters to mimic how we were hand blasting stuff. So we get a really nice, consistent finish on everything. And so what we're going to do is they'll go into the machine. So we'll slide onto our fixture. It's an operation. We hit a button and it'll go through its cycle. Comes out, we'll pull the part out. Slip the next one on. And while it's going, we'll do the, we'll make sure blow them off if they need to pull off. Get them positioned on the, on the racks for the next step. Now that we got the parts fixtured up, we transfer over here to the front of the line. And so we're gonna grab the parts of the hoist, we'll pick it up and we'll start the process through the tank. Then now into the clean tank. So this will be sit in the clean, it's a heavy detergent. So it's gonna clean off any oils, fingerprints, anything else in the process. Okay, so now we're coming out of our clean and we're going to go into uh, our rinse tank. So we do uh, a couple of rinses between each one of our chemistries so that we can wash off that chemistry from one before we go into the next. Okay, we're going to go into our etch tank next. And so what this is going to do is going to take that surface texture that we did in the bead blast and we're going to smooth that out some and try to make it so it's a nice, somewhat smooth finish, but still keep that matte, that matte look for you. Okay, so now you're going to start seeing a chemical reaction, and so what we're doing is we're, uh, that etch is eating away the surface of that aluminum and smoothing out those bumps from the, from the bead blaster. It's a pretty aggressive back, and so you'll see that chemical reaction coming up and see it foaming up on top of the tank. So in that process, as you can see in the tank, that it has that, and it looks really, really scary, and it's pretty aggressive chemistry, but as far as environmentally concerned, everything we do in this shop is very environmentally friendly. All of our rinse waters and our chemistries, uh, mostly we just have to neutralize um, and then we can discharge that to the city. It's a very environmentally friendly process. Go in here. Okay, so this is, uh, we're rinsing off of that edge tank. And so you can see that it's kind of a, you can see the color of it, so that edge is eating away the aluminum, but it doesn't eat away the other alloys that are in that aluminum. So this is our deox tank, so we're going to be in here for just a little bit. Then when we pull out of here is when you're going to see uh, nice clean parts, so there's no oxidation on them, and they're ready and prepped for um, anodizing. Okay, so now we came out of that deox, as you can see, it comes out a nice bright white color, that white metal aluminum, right? So now we're going to go into two more rinses to rinse that off. Okay, so this is the anodizing process. Um, this is a lengthy process, so your guys' parts will be in here for quite some time. So we'll go ahead and do a rundown of the rest of the process. So we're in this tank. It's maintained at a nice cold temperature. 
to get that consistent growth uh, of that film. So we worked really hard to make sure we got a nice, hard, tight free film on the parts to give you the best wear of it. So there's electricity going through that acid bath that is trying to, the acid is uh, etching away the aluminum and as electricity gets down to the pore, it's creating a glass layer, aluminum oxide layer on top of that aluminum. So it's not a surface treatment, it is actually part of the aluminum. And so it doesn't chip off, it doesn't plate, it's it's part of the structure. So we'll come out of the that last rinse, and then we'll come down here and we'll hit our black die. Um, so it sits in this die for quite some time. We work really hard to make sure we have the best quality dies we can. We need that dye to stay and we want it to be nice black forever for you. So the end of the process is we hit a seal and it's a hot nickel acetate seal. And so what we're trying to do there is cap off all those pores that we created in anodizing and it's going to trap that dye inside the film so that it'll, uh, so it'll stay there forever. Okay, so they'll come out of the line. We'll bring them out here in our packaging area. We'll uh, unrack them, inspect them, make sure everything looks good. We'll package them up and send them back to you. Yeah, when we get them back to the shop, we'll show you how they fit on a rifle. And Yeah, we appreciate it, man. Thanks for showing us the whole process. And we definitely appreciate the work and effort you guys put into making a good product. You bet. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for checking us out. We love having our customers come in and see what we're doing. Over. Hey, everybody. We just got these pick rails back from sapphire metal finishing where they got type 3 hard anodized we just got done pressing in some shear pins look at this they basically keep this located on the receiver and don't allow the pick rail to move and we can show you how these go on there basically pins align it and then they got four 840 screws that hold it in place. Well, we hope this video was informative and showed you how these pick rails were made. Please subscribe and hit the like button. Is it called a like button? What is it? Oh, the thumbs up button, not the thumbs down button.